I love you guys. This is, uh, all right, this is a little awkward, but it's true. Wife's a little jealous, can't blame her. You and I hang out every week. We have some laughs, we share some stories. It's, uh, you know, a lot of fun. Really want to make sure you watch out for in your door. Hey, dorm. what are you doing? Hanging out with Sub. Who? You know Sub, my subbies, my subscribers. Are you serious right now? Oh yeah, I'm serious. Oh my God. You guys are my subscribers and you're just amazing Doberman breed ambassadors and frankly, just a really cool group of people. I can't tell you the number of times you almost have me in tears cracking up laughing from the comments some of you guys leave on my videos. So I figured it was time I sit down and I dedicate an entire video just for you. So in this video, I'm gonna answer all your questions you've had about me, about Arlo, about my life in general or Doberman planet. Any and all questions, nothing is off limits here in this video. Um, you know, but before we jump into it, I'd like to invite you, if you haven't already, join this amazing group of subscribers. Scroll down below, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon that comes up next to it, and you can be part of this team. And if you really wanna get on the inside, go to dobermanplanet.com slash newsletter and sign up there, and you'll be on the inside crew of Doberman Planet, and uh, you'll get some behind the scenes stuff, and you'll be the first to have access to any of the really cool resources that I develop to help out Doberman owners. Okay, let's get going. It's time for you guys, my subscribers, to take charge of this video. So let's jump into it. I'm a little bit afraid to see what some of these questions are, but let's get going. Catherine Poindexter asked, when did you decide to get a Doberman? Why did you decide on a Doberman? And who was the first Doberman? And what was it about him or her that made them like eating potato chips, meaning you could not stop with just one? <laughs> um, that's a cool question. Uh, there's a few questions in there. Let's see if I can hit them all. Um, I decided to get my first Doberman in uh, 2012. That was Cooper, my first dog. I got him right after I bought my first house because my first house finally had a yard big enough. Um, I own the house and so I could finally get any dog that I wanted. Um, originally, I was actually looking at boxers because uh, my older sister had a boxer growing up and he was just an amazing dog, super in tune with people. He thought he was a person. Um, and, uh, you know, when I started doing more research about the different breeds out there and learning more about boxers, I kind of found out that, I don't know, he might have been an exception. Um, but they're pretty hyper and, and a lot of times not as focused on owners um, as the Dobermans are. And as I did more research on traits of individual traits on different breeds, it kept leading me back to the Doberman over and over again. They seem just like what I wanted. They eventually mature and get stoic and calm down. They're very focused on uh, their owners, the Velcro dogs. You know, there's so many things about them that I really liked. So that's what made me go over to the Dobermans. And what was it about? Um, Cooper that made him like eating potato chips, meaning I couldn't stop with just one Doberman. Um, well, I guess it was just, uh, just being so in tune with me, looking in my eyes, never wanting to run like off leash. He would just stick right, right with me. I had no desire to go anywhere else. I think he got out once. Yeah. He got out once early on from the backyard and we found him to sit on the front porch. Um, super trustworthy, very even keel behavior and temperament. Um, it wasn't long before he grew on me, and yeah, I knew I was gonna be a Doberman owner for life. A wannabe Marine 11918 asked, if you plan on having children, should you wait until you have your baby and then wait a few more months to purchase a puppy, or would it be okay to raise the dog before having a baby? I would say if you can, definitely raise the dog before having a baby. Um, if you can get your Doberman pup to be maybe uh, one and a half, two years old by the time your baby comes along, that's about perfect in my mind because you can get the dog dialed in, they know the um, rules of the house, they know the boundaries. Uh, at that age, they're a little bit more self-sufficient, they're in a routine. It's gonna be a lot easier to then, because your, your focus is gonna be split. Having a new baby at the house um, and having your dog is gonna be pulling you two different directions. So it'd be great if your dog was all dialed in before your baby came. That would be ideal for me. Um, just a brand new baby and a brand new puppy at the exact same time, that could be rough. So my opinion, if you can, get the dog one and a half, two years old before you have your baby and it uh, should be a lot easier. Michael Brown asked on my Doberman Planet Facebook page, Dobermans and growing pains, has Arlo ever experienced any? Um, no, Arlo really hasn't had any that I've picked up on, but my first Doberman Cooper, he definitely did. Um, one day, I think it was uh, around six, seven months of age, he started just limping, like heavily limping. And uh, I checked him, he seemed fine everywhere I could look, uh, and but it continued on. Eventually I took him to the vet because it wasn't going away. He did x-rays, 
And apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently you can see growing pains on an x-ray and they could tell that he was limping because of the growing pains. And the doctor said, just pretty much got to wait it out, but it's nothing serious. So it does happen. Your dog can start limping for random reasons. If that ever happens, it's best practice to take him to a vet. Kari Dixon asked, I'm thinking about not cropping my Dobie's ears. Am I wrong for that? Absolutely not. You are not wrong for that. It's funny because I have a lot of viewers on this channel from other countries, uh, not inside the United States, and they don't really understand how unusual it is inside the U.S. to not have cropped ears. Some people, like Kari apparently, um, feel actually kind of strange for not wanting to crop their dog's ears because it's so common here. You almost never see a Doberman without cropped ears in the U.S. Um, but no, you are not wrong, Kari, at all. Um, in fact, uh, yeah, it's part of the breed standard in the U.S. to normally have cropped ears, but there's nothing that disqualifies a dog um, from any kind of events or shows for not having, uh, uh, for having natural ears. So no, you're not wrong. In fact, there's a whole lot of viewers right now who are yelling at the screen watching this video going, no, please don't crop the ears because in many other countries, in fact, they, they see it as a kind of a negative thing and, and something that you put your dog through that you don't really necessarily need to. So yeah, hey, if you prefer natural ears, please, by all means, do it. B Chave or Chave6 uh, asks, my Doberman for some reason doesn't want to be potty trained. I've had her on schedule, food, diet, take her out at the same time every day, and she still poops or pees in the house. She's 11 weeks old. Well, 11 weeks old, um, don't stress too much. It's not too unusual to not be potty trained yet, but it sounds like you're having significant problems. They should be kind of starting to get the hang of it. Um, I would just dial it back. Go back to square one and start there. Square one is taking your dog out every one to two hours all day long, immediately after eating or drinking, immediately after any strenuous play, and immediately after any naps. Uh, go back to that, square one, start there. Um, also watch for any kind of strange behavior. If your dog all of a sudden gets up and just randomly runs off to a different room away from you, yeah, that's time to go grab that dog and bring it outside. If you're getting some failed trips outside where the dog's not going to the bathroom, that's a good thing. That means you're taking them out a lot, even more than needed. Do that in the beginning until you start to get your dog kind of dialed in and you go a good amount of time without an accident in the house. And then you can slowly start upping the number of hours uh, between uh, when you take them out. Nick Johnson asks, what are some good dog sports to do with the Doberman besides Schutzhund? Uh, now, Schutzhund, just so you guys know, is protection dog training. Um, that's a great activity for your dog, but there's uh, also obedience classes, agility, um, there's uh, scent tracking and some others. If you go to AKC's website, they have a good article there about getting started with different uh, sports, working dog sports, which is actually really cool. Those things can build confidence in your dog and really help you bond with your dog. They're, they get out a lot of pent up energy too, and you give them a job to do, it, it really stimulates the mind as well. Um, they're great, there's lots of options. The AKC website uh, has a lot of good uh, sports you can get your dog involved in. Jux999 says, do you think it's possible to live with a Doberman in the city? Yes, I definitely think it's possible. I think this also goes along with the question about living in an apartment or like a small living situation with a Doberman. Um, is it possible? Absolutely. The problems you're going to have, I'll tell you right now, the main problem is just that getting the dog to exercise. They're a big dog. They're very athletic. They're not going to be able to run circles around in your apartment. Um, they're going to be happy living in the apartment in general because they don't mind being right on top of their owners. In fact, they prefer being right on top of their owners usually, but they still need that exercise. They still need that mental stimulation. Um, if you have a park nearby, you can bring the dog to, uh, maybe you can take them out for a run, get them around some people, some other dogs. You're going to have to do that. And it's going to take a little more work than the average person who has a big yard. For example, uh, you might have to take them out twice a day to do that. Um, but if you're willing to put in that work, then yes, it is absolutely possible. Um, but make sure you stay on top of the exercise. Don't let it go because otherwise you're going to get a dog with some increased anxiety. And then that usually leads to destructive behavior. Goro Trickster asks, do you ever wonder what Arlo is thinking when you play with him? Um, yes, I wonder what Arlo is thinking all the time. Uh, <laughs> he'll stare at me right in the eyes. He's great at doing that head tilt thing. You've probably seen it in some of my other videos like he's trying to figure me out while I'm talking to him. Um, I wonder what's going through that dog's head all the time. Sometimes I think he's probably just trying to think of a way to outsmart me. All right, I gotta take a quick second, guys, to give a couple shout outs on this channel. It's some of the biggest supporters I have. Thank you so much to you guys. 
You're always leaving comments like every video. You're, you're propping me up and supporting me and, and helping me out where I need it. I, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Alpha Dog, you're amazing. Thank you so much for all the support. Um, just looking, Janet, you, I know you are a wealth of information about the Doberman breed. Your experience is just insane with Dobermans and I plan to pick your brain one of these days because I know you got a few like priceless nuggets in there of information that I got to find out what those are, but your support is so appreciated. Uh, Robert Sparks, you were there like from the beginning of this channel, man, and you've always supported me. Thank you so much. Uh, Suzanne the Patriot, you're also, I know you're a wealth of information too. We got to talk because I know that you have a lot to share about the Doran Bree, but your support has been so appreciated. Um, Lena Co. Sylvia Catfinger, you guys, you guys are awesome. Always sending me your love and support. Thank you so much. I see you always commenting. Uh, it really makes my day. I know there's more than just those and I, I wish I could remember some more at the moment. I'm on the spot so I can't remember them all and I'm sorry, but I do see it and thank you. Your support means the world to me. Okay, let's get back into uh, the Q&A session. Okay, Whisper to Me asks, do you feed Arlo a raw diet or kibble? If kibble, what brand? Uh, I feed him kibble. I feed him Purina Pro Plan Focus. Uh, it's a chicken and rice formula, large breed puppy version. Um, uh, I feed him that. That's one of the probably the most popular dog foods on Dorman for Dorman owners. Um, it has grains in it. It's not a grain free food. Um, it is. It passes WSAVA guidelines, which very few dog foods do. They actually do real trials of feedings before the food hits the market, which not everybody does. Um, I'm not aware of any mandatory recalls on this dog food. There's a few voluntary ones, but z I think zero mandatory ones, which is a really good track record. Um, so, and it, honestly, if you ask a lot of Doberman pros, I'd be willing to bet that's the most often cited ones for Dobermans. That's what I use. I really like it, but I'm not super uh, brand loyal necessarily. Karen Bernard asks, what is Arlo's favorite toy and what is, in your opinion, the best training treat? Uh, his favorite toy is the, oh, what's it called? It's the red, um, it's for horses usually. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. Jolly ball. It's a jolly ball. That's his favorite toy. It's mainly an outdoor toy for him. Um, but, and that's, that thing lasts too. Like I said, it's made for horses. It, it lasts really well. That's his favorite toy, I would say. Definitely when he's outdoors. Um, and favorite train, best train treat or train treat I use for him. I'm not even going to recommend one because I'm still trying to find one that really kicks him off and motivates him. So I'm still working my way through the train treats. Lizeth Hernandez asks, why do people say Dobermans shouldn't be for a first time owner? Uh, mainly, I think the main two reasons a lot of people say it's not good for a first time owner is uh, that their exercise requirements are kind of high. So it does take some dedication there and they're incredibly intelligent. And sometimes they use that intelligence to try to outsmart their owners. And if you're brand new, you're kind of figuring out how to approach some of the training things and you're kind of unsure of yourself and the dog's smart enough, they can pick up on that. And if you start like adjusting the training approach multiple times, for example, the dog will notice that and take note of that and might use that as their way to kind of get the upper hand on you. Um, and then maybe you could have some behavioral problems. I think those are the main reasons, exercise requirements and their extremely high intelligence and the fact that a new owner usually isn't as consistent with training. But if you know that ahead of time, you can really be, you can definitely be successful with these dogs for a first time dog owner if you know kind of what to expect and the kind of pitfalls to avoid. Jeremy Hyman on my Facebook page asked me, uh, with Cooper and now Arlo, I'd like to know your thoughts on ear posting. I see you are doing something different with Arlo uh, from what I've been shown using backer rod and tampon applicators. I like what you're doing. I just don't know what you're doing. Um, uh, Jeremy, I'm doing something that is called the zip tie ear posting method and um, it uses Torbot cement. It's like a surgical glue that's made for skin on skin contact uh, to hold things in place. Uh, it's basically a, a heavy zip tie wrapped with uh, a surgical tape around it and then, and then uh, held in place with that Torbot stuff. Um, I am working on a resource for you guys of ear posting tutorial with all the info you need. Um, if you want to get on in on that, make sure you get that info, sign up for my newsletter, dormanplanet.com slash newsletter. Um, but it's not quite ready yet. And if this is a time sensitive thing, like you need to figure this out now, cause you have a pup, um, just Google, Google, uh, zip tie ear posting method. And if the one you find is the one that uh, uses a Torbot glue, then I'm, that's most likely the one I'm using. Laura Reed, also on my Facebook page, asked, according to your research, does neutering at an early age stunt growth? Thanks. Uh, 
neutering it before 12 months of age has shown to have some negative effects in some studies that I've read on Dobermans, um, some negative health effects, increases the risks of some issues, um, cancers and other things. Um, the official recommendation I've made in the past was 18 to 24 months. I would say you could go as early as 12 months, depending on kind of what behavior stuff you're trying to achieve, if that's a big issue. But 18 to 24 months, uh, wait at least that long if you can before neutering, I would say. Um, the longer the better in general. Does it stunt growth? No, but the growth plates on the bones, um, you have, there is a chance if you neuter too early before maturity that the growth plates won't close up and the bones could grow a little longer than they should otherwise. And I've even heard of some growth plates closing and other ones not closing. So then therefore your dog could grow slightly out of balance and kind of, you know, a little bit structural in differences where maybe one leg's a little bit longer than the other, for example. Um, and so there are some risks as far as that goes, but I haven't heard of specifically stunting growth now. Mumu Rosie asked, uh, what gender do you think would stick to one person? I want to get a Doberman that will stick to me and be for me. Uh, they both will, but if I had to pick one, I'd say females. Females definitely tend to bond with one person really tightly. Dobermans in general do that, but females uh, definitely have a reputation for doing that a little bit more than males. Jamie Mortison asks, in real life, not in internet comments, how often do you get disapproving comments from people about Arlo's ears? How do people typically react to seeing a Doberman when you're out and about? Um, internet comments, I get it all the time. Uh, in person, very rarely. I think once I got it from a vet, um, but that was about all I've noticed really. Um, okay. Maybe actually one other time, um, with actually with Arlo, not too long ago at a family gathering, got a little comment. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's very rare because in the United States, at least where I live, cropping is so common that uh, most people wouldn't even recognize a dog as a Doberman if the ears weren't cropped. So, um, very rarely, very, very rarely, um, about twice ever have I had a comment in person about it. Don Gilman asked, I have an eight month old puppy. I've taught him basic commands and he does very well, except for off leash running after joggers, bikes, and other animals, etc. What is the best way to correct this behavior? He does not listen when I call him back. And then when I go to get him, he turns it into a game of me chasing him and won't come to me. Uh, what do you think of e-collars? I've never used one. Just wondering what you think of using it for training. Thank you. Uh, Don, thanks for the question. Um, off leash training. You said your dog was eight months old. That's a little bit young really to be getting into a situation where the dog can be chasing after bikes and other people and stuff. Really, um, off leash training is probably the behavior that you should progress the slowest with out of all of them. That needs to be the slowest one that you really got to get it dialed in before you go somewhere, especially if there's high stakes. Um, I start like in my house and then move to my backyard. I'll start working on some off leash stuff at family houses and their backyards, I'll go to the dog park and do it. Um, not until you're a hundred percent or as close as you can be confident in the, your dog's recall, their ability to come to you when you call them, should you be putting in their dog in a situation um, where it's a little higher stakes. So um, what I would say is back it up, back the, back the train up, start going into areas with less distractions, working on your recall, working on the off leash training stuff, and then progress slower. Eight months old, that is really early to be in any kind of those situations off leash in my opinion. Um, and yo, oh, you asked about e-collars, not a big fan of, fan of them really, as far as at least the static shock stuff. Um, you've seen, uh, you've never, probably never seen me recommend it on this channel um, because I don't really, I try to avoid that. Um, I do like the collars though that have the buzz feature and the beep feature um, where you can just beep the dog with an audible tone. I think that's pretty good because it has a place for sure when you have to do an immediate interaction with the dog right now for training purposes. It's kind of almost like a clicker. Um, I think that can have a great effect, but I know uh, e-collars are pretty popular with off-leash people and I could see where that would be because sometimes you got to interact with your dog from a distance, but um, yeah, I think the beeping and the buzzing collars have a, have a, definitely have a place for sure in training. Guys, it was really awesome having you take charge of this video this week. I plan to do a lot more of this Q&As, answering your questions in the future. Uh, so definitely hit that subscribe button down below and the bell icon too. That way you don't miss the future ones. Maybe I'll even give you a shout out on the next video. Um, guys, your support means the world to me. Uh, thank you so much. We have a lot more hanging out to do. So uh, let's, what do you say? Next time, same time next week? I wouldn't miss it. See you then.
I'm in the office talking to my subscribers. Can you come in here and help? Uh, I'm right in the middle of it, hon. Do I need to subscribe for you to pay attention to me? Well, I mean, that would be nice. You'd think you would've. I'm your husband. You still haven't subscribed.